Hello, everybody. I hope you had the best Christmas ever. You should. We've been talking about it for weeks. This is December 26th, the first Sunday after Christmas. And guess what we're going to talk about? The best Christmas ever. And you know what I think? In all of this garbage that we have gone through in 2020, great things are going to come out of this year because great things come out of difficult situations. Before we go any farther, we're going to have a great moment in time. So tune in, but I want to pray for you first. Lord Jesus, I pray in the Christmas spirit that there would be a double portion of the anointing of God today upon this sermon, upon this broadcast, and upon the ears that are listening. We've just come out of a great season. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Lord, let that joy last. Take us the end of this year in a high and in victory as we look forward to better days ahead. In the name of Jesus, amen. Normally, I start out with talking uh, about the subject matter, but today, I want to go right into the scriptures, and it's a scripture about the Christmas story, but something that's really particular. So let's read it right now. It's in Luke 2, 1 through 7. In the days of Caesar Augustus, Augustus, he issued a decree that the census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And this was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee, in Galilee to Judea, in Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. All right, what does this have to do with after Christmas? And what does this have to do with great things come out of bad situations? All right, get your thinking caps on. Get your exploration moments going. I've been thinking about this for a month, and I've been waiting for this sermon for a month to talk about this moment. Let's go back and think about Joseph and Mary having to go from Nazareth to Bethlehem because this Caesar in Rome decided, instead of just collecting taxes, think of it, instead of just collecting taxes, which he could have done, let's make everybody go back to their hometown. The craziest nothing in the world. If you were living in Jerusalem and your hometown was in uh, Germany, you had to go all the way there. And if you were living in Greece and your hometown was in Ethiopia, you had to go all the way there. And Joseph's hometown was in Bethlehem, but he was living in Nazareth, which they said could have been a six-month journey with a pregnant woman all the way to Bethlehem. Now, why in the world would a Caesar do that? Because it made no sense. It is no common sense in the world. Well, let me just tell you as an aside, and don't, don't repeat this. Political leaders at times don't use common sense. Maybe that's news to you, but the rest of us already know this. <laughs> yeah, I think you get it, and you're laughing too. No common sense. Caesar had no common sense. It just took more work, more expense, more manpower, more of his people. The whole thing was the craziest thing. But, listen, but, listen, there was a prophetic word that the Savior would be born in Bethlehem. And the Savior was in Nazareth in the womb of a little lady who was maybe 14 or 15 years old. And God moved heaven and earth to fulfill the prophetic word in his holy word. Do you know the Bible says that God watches over his word to make sure it's performed? And one night, I just, I just believe this. Think about it. I just believe it. The spirit of God came down to a wicked, wicked guy, Caesar Augustus, and whispered in his ear, take them all home and then make them pay taxes. And boom, he made a declaration that the whole Roman world would be taxed and they'd all have to go home. 
Can you imagine the, the upheaval, the difficulty, the trials? People without money that had to dig up money to get to their hometown. It was as bad as COVID. It was as bad as all the hell that we've had to go through this year. It was a baggage full of garbage like the garbage that we've had to go through this year. But God knew. Not only that, but he had set up the constellations to move at just the right time to where the stars would come together and these magi would travel nine months. It says it took them nine months to get from Iran to Bethlehem. Only God Almighty would do, would move heaven and earth to make sure his word is fulfilled. And can I tell you something? God will move heaven and earth to make sure his word to you is fulfilled. Because I believe great things can come out of difficult situations. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you've had it with this thing. You can see the light at the end of the tunnel. But God can make something great happen for you even today. You see, Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things in God work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And if you are a believer in Christ, you've been called according to the purpose of God. And if you're out there watching right now because you just know something's different, you got to get something right in your heart. God, yeah, God is calling you right now. And we're going to give you the opportunity to accept him in just about 15 minutes. You see, in Jeremiah 1.12, Jeremiah said, The Lord said to me, You have seen correctly, for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. He spoke that to Jeremiah the prophet. Do you know he spoke that to Isaiah the prophet? He has spoken through his word that he will watch over it and it will be done. Here's what I know. Number one, that God will move leaders to bring about fulfillment of his holy word. How else could he have moved Joseph and Mary to Bethlehem? I mean, Joseph and Mary... Can you imagine Joseph saying to Mary, Mary, I know you're pregnant, but I'm going to have you hop on this mule and I'm going to drag you for six months across the desert and we're going to go to my house where my mama lives. I'm not saying his mother lived there. I'm making up that part. But we know that's where his family lived. Where my family lives and that's where we're going to spend the winter solstice. No pregnant woman in the face of the planet would agree to that. Especially if it was my wife, she'd say, go by yourself, buddy. I'm staying right here. But when Caesar said, you got to pick it up and go, Joseph, Mary, I don't want to go. That's the last thing on my mind. I know it's going to be the worst trip of your life, Mary. I don't even know if we're going to make it by the time the baby is born, but we're going to give it the best shot we can. And Mary obeyed. Got on that donkey, that mule, whatever it was. And they went to Jerusalem on that six month, or excuse me, Bethlehem on that six month trip. You see, the second thing is no matter how difficult 220 has been for you, Jesus is still the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And his word to you will be completed. If God has given you a promise, no governor, no president, no king, no world ruler can ever override the promise. If God's given you a promise, no COVID, no disease, no, no upheaval in the uh, election system, whatever you believe, whatever's going on, nothing can separate you and stop the love and the word of the living God coming to you and bringing you to the fruitful place that he has ordained from you, for you, excuse me, from the beginning of time. See, Philippians 1, 6 says this, Be confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. You can be confident. Some of you have promises that are unfulfilled. You know God gave you the promise. Maybe you've been reading in the Word and God spoke to you maybe a year or two ago. Maybe last January, you just felt like this is going to be your best year. You'd started a business, things were going well, and boom, by the end of February, it was all gone. Can I tell you, God can restore what the locust has eaten. God can bring this about anyway. Look, at, nothing can separate us. Nothing can stand against us. If God is for us, nobody can be against us. I want to tell you something else. 
We need to build ourselves up in the faith. I talked about it last week a little bit, but be, build yourself up in the faith. Now, how do you do this? One, you grab a hold of the promises. Read the word of God. Grab a hold of those promises. That promise that I read to you earlier, that being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you to carry it to completion is a promise that God gave me when I was years and years and years ago, I went to college. I was already married. I had a son. God called me to go back to the uh, college. I went to Bible University. And I was in the middle of my sophomore year, and I thought, this stinks, man. I got to make a living. My wife and I were living on just 500 bucks a month. We were scratching by, and, and God was supplying, but it was, you know, at that moment in time, it was barely getting, his supply was barely, it was like eat, eating manna in the desert. And I thought, God, this can't be you. God, give me a word. And I opened my word, my Bible, and I read that, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. And so I underlined it in my Bible. And to this day, when I read that scripture in my devotions, I remember back to that time, that time in 1985 where God gave me a promise. And you say, well, what happened? Did you suddenly become, well, no. Did you suddenly get everything? No, nothing changed except for it changed right here and right there. The thing that needs to change in you today is you need to grab a hold of the promises and you need to put the promise right here and right there. And don't let go. You need to begin to start the new year with a renewed resolve that no matter what has happened in the past, it will not control your future. If you were laid off and changed jobs last in the past, it will not control your future. If you had to take the PPP as a business, it will not control your future. That doesn't mean you don't have to work it right. I'm not saying that, but it won't control your future. If somebody in your family had COVID and things changed, it won't control your future. Let me tell you what, if you had to move because of a job, it won't control your future. God's got a great plan for you. Perhaps, now listen to this, perhaps, are you listening? Perhaps that movement was the same thing that happened to Joseph and Mary. God used a tragedy, a difficulty, a stupid political movement to get Joseph and Mary to the exact spot they needed to be. I'm telling you, don't give up. You are probably in the exact spot right now. Perhaps, and I'll say this, and then we're going to bring this kind of to a conclusion. Well, kind of we are. I'm going to say this. Perhaps you kind of lost your way with the Lord. Maybe you've been going your own way the last two or three years, who knows how long, and you've been living your own life, and suddenly COVID hits, and ever since March 1st, you've been something going on inside of you, and you've been drawing closer and closer and closer and closer to the Lord, and suddenly they closed down the churches, and you couldn't go to church, and you wanted to go to church because you knew that's where you need to be. Let me tell you something. That was the hand of God using COVID to bring you back to where you need to be. So there's three, there's four things I want you to do. One, let's just immerse ourselves. Immerse yourself in believing that this is going to be the best year ever. You got to believe it. Every day you get up, this is the best year ever. I told this a couple weeks ago and I do it every night and I've been doing it every night and now I'm going to switch it. But until Christmas came, I would go to bed like this. I'd raise my hands in the dark, turn off the Christmas tree light and say, this is the best Christmas ever. But I, I, I like to say it almost that loud because my wife was already in, in the other room getting ready for bed and she just tolerated it, but I believed it. And, and I want you to immerse it. And you know what I did this morning? I guarantee you, I got up and I said, this is gonna be the best year ever. You gotta immerse yourself and believe it. And so focus, focus on what it will take to make it the best year ever. And then dwell in those things that you've already focused on. Get around people that think your way. And the fourth thing is produce. Produce things that are going to make the best year ever for you. Whether you have to move, make a change, whether you've already made the change, but you've been fighting it this whole time, you've been kicking, 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 and suddenly, boom, God's speaking to you right now. And he's saying, I brought you to this place. Embrace it and make it the best year ever. I'm going to tell you, there's nothing new under the sun, but the tried and true of Almighty God will never fail. The word of God says this, heaven and air may fail, but his word will never fail. It says not one dot, 
not T crossed, will change in his word. What are we like? We're all like grass. Our glory is like the flowers of the field. The glory fades and the grass withers away. But the Lord's word will last for all eternity. Today is your day. Today is your moment. And I'm challenging you to start this day off, even though the new year is another week away, to start this day as the best year ever. You know how to start it at the best year ever? Is give your heart to Jesus Christ. If you die tonight and you don't know if you're going to go to heaven or hell, this is your opportunity to know without a shadow of a doubt that you are a child of the living God. The Bible says you've got to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and then you would be saved. Saved means that you are, you, you, you are bound for hell, but now you're bound for heaven, that God has set you free. And so I want to lead you to that moment. You're watching right now. And if you'd like to give your heart to Jesus, just watch this. Do this. If you're all by yourself, just do that. If you're with people and they're not looking at you, do that. But if you kind of want to make it a private moment, you don't have to blink. Just blink in your head, asking the Lord to come into your heart. Now repeat this simple sermon, this simple prayer after me. And if you're all alone, say it out loud. If you're with somebody you can trust, say it out loud. But if you're with people, Say it in your heart. But I, I just find that saying it out loud just kind of uh, gives me a double portion of, yeah, this is it. So here we go. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me for my sins. I believe you died for me, and I believe you rose again. And with your help, from this day forward, I will live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you looked up to accept Christ as your personal Savior, right there on the screen is going to play, uh, coming up a place where you can, if you're using a touch screen or you have a mouse, click on that, please. Go in and register. We want to help you get started and walk the great walk of faith with Jesus Christ. If you're maybe watching by YouTube, please get on our website, crosswindsnb.org, and, and just register for a God journey there. You'll be never sorry that you did that. You're, you'll be excited, and we just want to help you go through this journey with us because following Jesus and walking the journey is the greatest life ever. This is going to be bad, your best year ever. Well, I want to switch subjects for a minute. We're coming to the end of the year, and if you would like to give for tax credit, it needs to be mailed in. It has to be postmarked by the 31st. It needs to be mailed in. You can do it online. You can text to give 84321. You can go to our website. You can also do our app. And I am so grateful for the great givers we have in this church. And everyone, the Bible says it's better to give and receive. And this next year, this first quarter, I don't want to be Debbie Downer here, but the first quarter they say is going to be the worst before we snap out of this thing. And we here at Crosswinds, we spend every second Tuesday and every fourth Tuesday feeding hundreds and thousands of people. And we're grateful that your generosity has enabled us to be generous to our community around here. So God bless you. I hope you had the Merry Christmas. You probably still have family around, or maybe you're just christmas out and you think, Pastor Pete, I'm done with Christmas. That's okay. I want you to have a happy new year. So let's just declare who we are in Christ as we finish this up. Are you ready? Here we go. I am blessed. I have divine favor. I'm not alone. I'm a child of God. I am more than a conqueror. I put my trust in the Lord. I walk in the promises of God's holy word because God has a miracle for me. Amen. God bless you.